Quick raid, nothing special because this is obviously a concept. This is the Fortis Coliseum. First look and rewards. You know what that means? Everyone's like, oh, the Blue Inferno. It was a, the Blue Inferno was a nice fan theory idea, but let's stop calling it the Blue Inferno. Let's stop calling the Void Waker the Karazi. Let's move on with life. Okay, the Colosseum looks good. Oh, there's four pillars. It's just like the Inferno. Well, shit. Okay, so get ready for get ready to vote for Valamor's most exciting blood sport. Are you ready to take on the Colosseum? Step through the grand entrance to find out the Fortis Fortis Colosseum. Uh, we don't give a fuck about the law. Let's move on. Gameplay. The Fortis Coliseum is old school's third wave-based minigame following the fiery footsteps of the Fight Cave and the Inferno, which Getting is good. Done. Shut up. Like a All right, I'm trying to, trying to read a blog. Stop adding time to the subatomic clock. Thank you, Ian Ferris. Appreciate it. You're a legend. Uh, like its predecessors, the Coliseum is a highly repeatable PVM encounter with a high skill ceiling and a steep difficulty curve. The later waves contain some of the toughest enemies Gilnor has to offer. Although players who are new to combat can still try their hand at the earlier waves. Excellent. There's a big focus on reactionary combat. These, the kind where you see the enemies spawn in and quickly figure out how to manage them. Like the, uh, like the Inferno. Unlike the five Ks in the Inferno, the Coliseum invites you to make big decisions between each wave. Awesome. We've seen concepts that they're hinting here in the, what's it called? The Game Jam, uh, Dev Game Jam. Modifiers. The modifier system ensures that no two Coliseum runs will be the same. You might have seen similar systems in roguelike and roguelites, awesome. Um, at the end of each round, you'll be given an option to alter your gameplay experience in significant ways. If anyone's ever played um, Risk of Rain 2, which is a really fun game to play, by the way, it sounds like we're heading in this direction. Um, so, buffing enemies, debuffing yourself, and even altering the terrain for a bigger challenge. The selection of modifiers you have to choose from is randomized, but beware, your choice will persist for the rest of your run. Don't bite off more than you can chew. For example, um, let's just say you you finish wave three and now every fourth monster that enters the room is a child molester, okay? And then for every every wave onwards until you finish, every time the fourth monster enters the room, it's the guy that made CT Enter 2. He comes out and starts trying to pummel your ass while you're trying to finish the Coliseum. And that's just kind of how the concept drags on throughout the rest of the uh, the rest, the rest of the waves, just to put that into perspective for those who don't understand that. Thankfully, you'll also be offered uh, another choice at regular intervals, the option to exit the Coliseum with all of the loot you've accumulated so far. There's no shame in holding back to fight another day, of, co of course, although the best awards are reserved for those rare champions who stick out to the bitter end, of course. The longer you're in there, the better the, re the rewards. Every four hours, it sounds impossible. No, four monsters, not four hours, like every four mobs. Um, we want to keep the specific details a surprise, makes sense, but the mechanics, uh, the mechanic is at the heart of the Coliseum experience. We can't wait to see you battle through the waves and find out what's waiting at the end. Hopefully they can live up to the hype because people are expecting this to be tougher than the Inferno and I, I think um, for it to succeed in the end game it probably needs to be at least on par with it. But yeah, um, good. Hoping, hoping JX can pull it off. I, I don't see why they couldn't. Not everyone is in uh, for heaping piles of gold you can gain in battle. Some fighters uh, want something even greater. Glory. Okay, so within the walls of the Fortress Coliseum, glory is more than fl uh, flowery language. Serves as a measurement of your prowess and comes with tangible benefits. You'll earn glory every time you complete a wave. How much you get depends on how much damage you took, how quickly you cleared the wave, and the number of errors you made. So that's really good. It's about being persistent with your prey flicks, um, fast for your speed running and being just efficient in general. Kind of brings all the raids together, you know? Um, effectively. It's a reflection of how well you performed. Makes sense. Uh, this is a currency, isn't a currency in the traditional sense. You can't farm it by repeating low level waves over and over again. It's based solely on your performance and the better you perform, the more glory you'll accrue. Okay, or accrue, sorry. Um, as you gain more glory, you'll re gain respect inside and outside the Colosseum. The regulars will want to access to will grant you access to untradeable rewards, including a swanky new cape, of course, while ordinary citizens all over Valamore will recognize you and bestow rewards befitting your station. So the Inferno Cape is going in the bin. No more Theater of Bloods with Inferno Cape, guys, because if you don't, if you've got Inferno Cape, you're garbage because you, you bought it. Now you have to pay someone to do the, the Coliseum for you to get this new cape, the, the Glory Cape, okay? It teleports you to Edgeville as well, which is nice too, so that's hand, handy, the, the Cape of Glory. Um, outside of the reward space, Glory also serves as a way to measure yourself against other players. Anyone who can beat the fight caves and crow, crow, crow about it to their heart's content, but Glory will let you see which of your friends is really the better fighter. We know that talented PBMers have been complete, uh, competing against each other for the time 
uh, for time immemorial, or at least since 2013, and this system makes that official. We hope it will encourage everyone to get stuck in and improve their PBM skills. So essentially, what that means is, because currently I'm probably the best PBMer in the game, right? I'd say I'm number one, maybe a close second. Um, now I've got to prove it. Now I've got to gain this glory and, and solidify it and prove to everyone that I am number one. So that's good. That's going to give people, a, I guess people are getting a second chance at, at the number one position. So good luck to everyone involved. Sounds good. Um, that said, there are only some so many ticks you can save, hits and you can avoid, and enemies that you can slay in a single run to distinguish between the best of the best. We need to go beyond. We need to go endless mode. All right. Those of you who can't get enough of the Coliseum can choose to extend their run by running back every single wave with all the modifiers accumulated so far, plus a few new ones. This is sure to push your glory to new heights, kind of like a prestige mode. Get to rank 55 in COD prestige, do it again. Same sort of thing, except you keep all the shit. Um, so the rewards, a few people um, a few people would put their life on the line without getting anything in return. Uh, for your time spent bloodletting in the Colosseum, you'll receive plenty of rewards. So you earn rewards in two distinct ways. Firstly, after completing a wave, you'll have a chance to earn some unique tradable rewards, um, which you can choose to cash out um, the next time you're offered the opportunity. Additionally, you can also unlock untradable rewards by meeting the, require, the, re the requisite glory threshold. As uh, always, we're open to discussion about the rewards, uh, what rewards might offer. We've already had a few ideas to get you started. The Glaive of Rolas. For starters, we're talking um, about throwing glaives, not those great big spear polearm things. Okay, cool. The Glaive of Rolas is a one-handed chargeable thrown weapon in a brand, brand new weapon category, which bo bounces back to you after each hit, like a boomerang. Uncharged, you'll throw it, hit your enemy from between 0 and 50% of your max hit and have the glaive return to your hand. Infinite ammo sounds neat, but only 50% damage. What gives? Well, it says uncharged. When charged, the groovy glaive really comes into its own. Its sharp edges will slice and dice for two hit splat. Two hit splats, wow. Each splat rolls its own accuracy and damage, where the damage rolls between 0 and 50% for your maximum of your maximum hit. Not bad, but there's more, okay. As fun as the thematics are, we've got a cherry on top to make sure that your time spent obtaining one of these bad boys is worthwhile. Its special attack for 50% energy successful hits will drain the target's defense by 10% of the magic level. Don't know where that's going to be used, but sounds good. This means that when charged, you'll drain either 0, 10, or 20% of your target's magic level from their defense. All right, so sounds good. Corporeal Beast. Uh, depending on whether 0 or 2 hits connect, in essence, uh, it's like a little bit of a ranged dragon warhammer. All right, just with a twist. Additionally, your target's defense cannot be reduced by the Glaive of Relos past 50% of its initial value, meaning if the target has 200 defense, 200 defense, sorry, the Glaive can share off 100 at most. Not bad, good size. Uh, good for Zora? Yeah, it's great for Zora, dude. That's insane for Tebow. Um, yes, actually, it's really good for Tebow. That, that's, that's very good. Okay. What's the attack range? The attack range is 5, so you're not hitting Zuck with it, but you can hit, obviously, Jads with it. Um, that's pretty handy. The attack speed is 6. Wow, so that's slow as fuck. Makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense, actually. Yeah, because it hits twice. Alright. Really accurate. 115 range accuracy. The crystal bow is... 100 so they're more accurate it's more accurate than the crystal bow it's not as accurate as the bofa i believe um i don't know where the bofa would be on here um but th that's without crystal armor of course but shit that's fucking accurate as hell cunt 115 is nuts Huge GZ on under two days. Thank you, James. Uh, it's been under and over two days for the past week. Thank you, though. My current mental and physical condition is good, though, because I played some golf today, so I'm feeling, feeling fine. Just going through this new weapon that they're trying to uh, introduce to the game. Dragon Warhammer Special Attack reduces your target's defense by 30% of its current value, meaning each subsequent special attack drains a smaller number of the defense levels before it hits. Yes, the Glaive drains your target's defense, but the drain is based on the target's current magic level, meaning that subsequent hits should still reduce defense by the same amount. Since the target's magic level likely hasn't changed yeah okay so that's that's really good for things like zora that'll be good for corp um and you just keep hitting it but you can only drain it up to 50 percent. so you basically would run these and then you'd run bgs on corp pretty much straight away 
like or you'd run these until you start running the arc light maybe i don't know someone will have to do the math someone smarter than me that gives a shit um, against targets of high defense and low magic levels, the Dragon Warhammer still reigns supreme as your defense reduction spec weapon. But against targets of high defense with high magic levels, the Glaive of Ralos should prove to be a better option. It's also like going to be incredibly fucking accurate, especially coupled with the multiple chances to hit, so it's less, a little less all or nothing with the Dragon Warhammer. Our, our hope here is to aid a little more variety when it comes to choosing your spec weapon for certain content. What's Tecton's magic level? It, I'm pretty sure it's non-existent, right? He's got fuck all magic. 205. Okay, so if you hit him... I mean... You can't even hit him with range though, can you? He's immune to range, right? So it won't matter, I'm pretty sure. So it's irrelevant on him. The Echo Crystal. Our next unique is something you'll likely see in the wild a little more often. The Echo Crystal. This resin, re, resin, resin, these resonant rocks give off a nasty shockwave when struck. Inflicting recoil damage to your attacker. That's given. Uh, but uh, how do you equip them? I'm thinking you'll be able to slot your crystal into your existing boot slot item. That means a little extra love. The current front runner is the Guardian Boots. Although um, nothing's set in stone yet. We chain, we, uh, when charged with the Ecto, sorry, with the Echo Crystal, the boots will inflict recoil damage in a 3 or 3 square around the wearer. That's actually pretty fucking huge. I like that. We reckon this effect will gain, uh, again, will be perfect for wave based battles, although we think you'll find it useful in a wide variety of situations. Chomp and stomp. Yeah, I mean, if you're tanking melee damage, if you're tanking on Slayer Tars, absolutely that'll fuck. That'd be awesome. Like just doing gargoyles. That, that'd be mad. Uh, when the charges run out, you'll need to pick up another Echo Crystal that they're tradable, so you can spend a little GP to grab one on the Grand Exchange or head back to the Colosseum to refresh your, re re refresh your supply. And that's huge. And it's on Guardian Boots too, not Prims, because Prims are cringe. Rip Ring of Recoil, Suffering. So, suffering kind of died when the Light Bearer came out anyway, right? The suffering's only re really is now in uh, Zora, so... that um That's totally fine. Sunfire Fanatic Armor, and also like for Iron Man, this is going to be later in the game, so you're probably not going to be using this anytime soon. You still need the Guardian Boots, and people are going to, people get their dick hard over Prim still for some reason, so, uh, yeah, it depends. You've been suffering as a prayer ring now, yeah, it's good, man. Sunfire Fanatic Armor, between the Glaive, the Relos, and the Echo Crystal, the Sunfire Runes, uh, and Sunfire Runes, more on those in just a moment. A lot of what's on offer is still is a little more involved than simple bigger number approaches to rewards that said sometimes it's nice to keep things simple so they've got sunfire fanatic armor is effectively proselyte proselyte armor with bigger numbers awesome 10 8 and 6 so it's 18 prayer i believe it's currently 8 and 6 right over here so that's that's an extra four prayer bonus if you're doing slayer tasks right and there is defensive as rune armor, which is awesome. That's mad. Recoil is limited to three by three around you. Yeah, yeah. So it's for melee melee recoils. Um. Yeah, that's that's fucking sick. That that's actually fucking mad. Better prayer armor. It's huge. Sunfire dust. You receive sunfire dust in bulk pretty regularly throughout your Colosseum runs, uh, similar to the Phantom Muspar Essence. Okay, Sunfire does let you charge or otherwise interact with various other items like the um, the Ralos thing, I'd, I'd imagine. Uh, you already know that you can use Sunfire Dust to upgrade the Colossal Amulet. No, I don't. Um, but you'll also be able to use it to craft Sunfire Runes and charge the Sunfire Cape. Okay, so the Cape's called Sunfire. Did, did we miss something? When the fuck was it called the Sunfire Cape until now? Did they write this fucking thing backwards? What the fuck is the Sunfire Amulet? What do you mean, imagine not knowing? I don't, how the, why the fuck would I know that? Sunfire runes are brand new runes that will take slightly different approach to the Wrath Rune formula, assuming you have the requisite runecraft level, um, or the funds to pay someone else to do it. You can obtain Sunfire runes by imbuing regular old fire runes with Sunfire Dust at the Fire Altar. I like it. The Sunflower Cape, yeah. Um, artifact of pre-writing the post. Yeah, I know. Just like lava runes, some fire runes will count as fire runes when casting spells, but whenever you consume one, the spell will gain a 10% minimum hit. As a brief note, we anticipate that hovering over a fire spell 
uh, with any Sunfire runes in your inventory would clearly show that you'd be using Sunfire runes as opposed to the boring old fire runes. Cool. Um, we heard that this boost will breathe new life into the fire spells offering with the standard spellbook, especially in conjunction with weapons like the harmonized orb stuff. Again, we're thinking that the added damage consistency will help make those underdeveloped options more attractive. Bigger isn't always better, you know. No, like minimum hit is huge. If your min if your max hit is um, with the Tome of Fire and Wrath Runes, what like what's the max hit in that? Like 40, 50 or something? What is it? Um, fire Fire Surge. If you're, say, say you're PKing, for example, even. PKing, or you're doing some sort of fire surge, 55 on task, 49, okay? Let's say you're doing your absolute max mage off task, 49 is your max hit. That means it'll pro it will probably roll up, it'll, pro it'll probably um, scale up. That means your minimum hit is also five. That means you're not hitting ones to fours ever, which might not sound like a lot, but when you're trying to punch numbers, if you're trying to speed run, if you're PKing, that 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 can make a that can make a big difference. You can still hit zeros and splash. Well, no, you won't be able to hit zeros. You'd just still hit. You'd still, oh no, because you can still miss. You can still hit zeros and splash, but it, it knocks off the minimum. You know, Fang for magic. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. But reduce uh, increasing the minimum hit on combat in this game is a great way to increase damage per second or o overall DPS without like busting weapons through the fucking ceiling like the shadow for example amulet was originally that that minimum hit bot for two-handed weapons was it i didn't know that that's pretty cool uh designer's quiver okay would be really would it really be a web-based minigame without a sick cape up for grabs a quiver Okay, so Designer's Quiver is our proposal for the new best in slot range, offering it in the cape slash back slot. Almost uh, after almost six years of Ava's Assembler occupying the top slot, now a best in slot item comes with very high expectations. In this case, you'll need to put on a truly glorious performance in the Colosseum, make it through every wave, and you should have accumulated enough glory to take home this untradeable, unique reward. For your trouble, you'll get a 10, plus 10 range accuracy, plus one range strength over the Ava's. And let's face it, it looks much nicer than a rucksack full of magnets and undead animal parts. Plus one range strength is kind of weak to me. I was like, that's fuck all. Plus two might be more ideal, really. Like, because Ava is, is already plus two range strength. It's not really that good. Why is it in brackets four? What does that mean? This would be when you... Oh, okay, hold on. The numbers in the bracket indicate the stats of the quiver when it's charged with sunfire dust. Ah, okay, that's cool. All right, they beat me to it. Awesome. Uh, more on that in just a sec. Well, that, that's huge because it's also 28 range accuracy. Okay, it might actually be worth wearing this with Crystal at that point then. Because normally, like, wearing wearing the current backpack isn't really worth it when you're in full Crystal, like, over, like, if you're doing tri setups. So, something like this would be more ideal. Uh, let's look, uh, looks, it looks uh, cooler than... Uh, well, we don't know what it fucking looks like, cunt. There's no image. What? We, we, we can't seriously expect you to start picking your own arrows up off the floor. Bring your quiver and... Your favorite of the Avis devices along to the workshop of some dickhead and she'll apply the same ammo saving effect on your cape, 80% pickup rate or the assembler, 72% for accumulator. Makes sense. On top of that, you can charge a quiver using some fire dust, plus 10 range accuracy and one strength. Each time you fire a shot, you'll lose a little dust. Okay, so make sure you stock up if you want to the best bang for your buck. That's cool. I like that. That is, um, that that's... That's a really good way to design the, the best in slot cape. Some of you may be wondering why the new cape slot upgrade is uh, aimed at range, not magic, especially since Mage Arena 2 and Dragon Slayer 2 made their way into the game around the same time. At the end of the day, uh, neither Ava's Assembler nor the Imbued God Capes are obtained from content suitable for a best in slot item with the addition of the Sunfire Runes and the Colossal Amulet, rounding out the magic and melee uh, rewards. Where the fuck is the Colossal Amulet? What? They're writing this thing backwards. Uh, so make sure you stock up. Oh, yeah, we read it. Read that. Sorry. Um, we felt it appropriate to make the designer's quiver a ranged item. Awesome. Uh, you also this also lets us stay well clear of talks about mage magic power creep. Yep, which is a real and pressing concern. Upgrading the gold case would also make Tomb and Shadow more dominant, and we'd want to give such um, such an upgrade very careful consideration before we even thought. Um, about putting it in. Yeah, I think the Shadow t technically needs a 0.5 times nerf on damage and accuracy at least. Uh, by contrast, it's time. It's about time that some someone knocked the accumulator down a peg. Yep, that's cool. Makes sense. Like it. That's awesome. Rest in peace to our 350 backpack havers. Other rewards. The amulet is still not in here though. They've been the amulet, but I forgot to take it out of the text. Awesome. 
Um, unlike the fight caves or the inferno where all your rewards are tied up in the big fancy capes, uh, you also get end of the Fortress Colosseum. You also get at the end, the Fortress Colosseum will give you plenty of opportunities to cash out early and make a tidy profit. End of wave rewards may contain any of the tradable uniques, some fire dust and other familiar items, all of which can be converted to GP. The aim is to really drive home the risk versus reward element. Well, uh, we'll give you... Uh, will you take a big pile of loot and gracefully drop out or risk it all for a chance to wow the crowd and earn more glory? Awesome. I like it. Can you spectate as a player? Can you go in and watch people? Because that would be cool. You can't do that with Inferno, can you? I don't think you can enter the Inferno and, and watch people. You can enter Tob and spectate. You can't enter Cox or or TOA and spectate. Can you just, I don't think you can spectate TOA. It's Colosseum. Let us have a seat. Why not? Um, at, at the same time, we want to we want new, newer players to feel like they can give content uh, like this a go, even if they want to make it, uh, if they can't make it all the way to the final way. Surviving even a few rounds is more than average, more than the average citizen of civet, civ yep, can uh, hope for, and making the effort will earn their respect. I think if they balance that right, that'd be really good because that will kind of. Um, it sounds like what they're gonna, what they're doing here is what they failed to do with TOA, which is allow access to all players without giving. Uh, like unique access to less experienced PVMers, right? For example, you can get a Fang or a Shadow on a 0 to 50 invocation raid, but it sounds like in this you're not getting anywhere fucking near it unless you can start doing bigger, um, bigger ways. So I think that's the, that's the the angle they're trying to approach with this, which is really nice. Considering it's also not not a raid, it's wave based content, so it's probably easier to scale it. Would encourage all levels to jump in. Sounds awesome. Yeah, absolutely. We heard this will incentivize low level players to give the Colosseum a go and get their first taste of PBM combat. Yep, the waves aren't just a bunch of new enemies to fight. They're all benchmarked for you to measure yourself against every time you enter the minigame. We hope you see players come back. We hope to see players come back every few levels, see how they've improved while picking up some neat rewards on in the meantime. Now, the question is, is this going to be dangerous for a hardcore Iron Man? Um, you know, as opposed to the glory the, the fight cave and the inferno? It should be, but We'll see what they what they do and say about that. Group Ironman, obviously, it will be dangerous no matter what. But for normal hardcores, I think it should be dangerous. Um, you should lose a life here if you die in here, because I think it's uh, that's just yes, it should it should be that way. It was an oversight, obviously, for Cox and and Inferno and Five Ks originally. So I hope they don't continue to keep that trend on normal hardcores. Are you not entertained? Sorry, you know what they say when in Fortis? No, they don't. Um, if you are entertained we'd love to hear your feedback yeah feedback's good mate solid looks awesome loving it your blog makes you know gives me an aneurysm sometimes but i get it you removed some fucking some amulet shit um nothing but fat dubs currently for jagex on this until we know more though that'll be it this is the easiest room in the raid it's quite simple you got a big boy look at him god damn fuck mate look at that boy it's huge